Hello, welcome to Your Sparkly Brand. We're here to inspire and empower female entrepreneurs like you. This podcast is all about making your marketing and branding sparkly. Each week we share valuable tips and tricks, discuss common mindset challenges, and interview inspiring female business owners. In a world that tries to pit women against each other, Your Sparkly Brand is saying no to that BS. I'm Lauren Tassie, and I'm here with my co-host, Megan Gersh. Hey, Meg. Hey, Lauren. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Yeah. I'm, you know, we got another podcast on the books for today. Yes, absolutely. I'm excited about this episode. Me too. This is something that I think, well, let's, let's, let's do our sparkly moment of the week before we jump into our topic too much. So what was your, what's your sparkly moment? Yeah. So a few episodes back, we had an interview with Rosalind Crowe, and she kind of inspired me to start reading The Artist's Way or not reading, but I'm listening to the audiobook now. So, and doing the exercises with it. So super excited. And I will keep you guys updated on how that's going. Oh yeah. That's on my, that's on my list too. I haven't started it yet, but she like inspired me so much from that episode that I'm just like trying to adapt everything. Yeah, totally. That was honestly, I think one of our best episodes to date. Yeah, I agree. So my sparkly moment is legitimately very sparkly. I went to, so there's this, let's call it like a DJ group, a DJ collective called Fleet Mac wood and they they play only Fleetwood Mac songs plus like side projects and solo albums and I, I went to one of their events a couple of weeks ago and I realized like they are the definition of a sparkly brand because if you don't like Fleetwood Mac do not come to this show and they literally they put it on all their marketing materials they put it like when you go to buy tickets and it literally says like stand back stand back if you don't like Fleetwood Mac because it's like they lean so hard into what they do and they do such a great job you know they take these sort of a little bit of folk songs and put like dance beats under them and it becomes so fun. And then on top of that, they, when they throw a party, when they throw an event, they, you know, put out like a fashion inspiration board, right? They give you like a dress code and obviously like you don't have to follow it, but it just makes it so fun because like this one was all like 1920s Belle Epoque. Like they literally like, like this paragraph long thing about like what you should wear and how this is the energy we're going for. So I just think that like, again, there's plenty of actual sparkles too, but it's just leaning into that, like, this is what we do. If this isn't for you, no worries. We're not trying to be for everyone. We're happy to throw a party for a thousand people that really want to be here. And that just like, it makes the crowd so much more engaged and like interacting with each other because everybody is just like having this very, you know, real experience together. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like the epitome of a sparkly brand, like you are really creating that experience and like in every facet of the entire night. So that's awesome. Yeah. I'll put a link to their sound cloud in the show notes in case anybody loves Fleetwood Mac and wants to check them out. So what are we chatting about today? So today we are talking about sales funnels. Um, And this is something, you know, I talk about them a lot with my clients and I realize that a lot of times people just kind of think they know what a sales funnel is, or they have no clue and they, you know, not along, but it's, they're not that complicated. And when you realize that every day you are entering someone's sales funnel, you might not know it, you might not be aware of it, but being as a business owner, knowing what your sales funnel is and having an outline and a plan for it in your head is what's going to take your business to the next level. Like it's just, it becomes, once you get it right, it's just a matter of numbers. You just need to put more people in the top of the funnel to get them to the last stage where they make a purchase. And so we'll, I'll link to a graphic of a funnel because I think that's very helpful too. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what a sales funnel actually is. So very simply put, a sales funnel will just move a potential customer customer from being aware of who your business is to moving them all the way to making a purchase. The ultimate goal is to move the customer down the ranks through the funnel. So it's highly unlikely that every single person is going to make it to every step in the funnel. Hence the name funnel as it gets narrower towards the bottom of the funnel, less and less people are going to make it through. And it's very, very unlikely that people will skip a level. It's called a funnel because many people will enter at the top, but as you progress down to each level, not a whole lot of people are going to make it to the end. So yeah. And one thing I wanted to mention is that depending on what you're selling and the price point of your product is going to determine how complicated your funnel is, how many steps there are, how much time a customer needs in between steps. You know, a funnel could be as simple as like, you know, when you get like a targeted Instagram ad and you're just like, I need that immediately. And maybe you do like make a purchase without interacting beyond that, you know, initial Instagram, that's still a funnel, right? You're still being shown you, you're going to a landing page, you're get, you're getting information and then you're making a purchase. Usually that's, you know, a low price item, you know, something that's like maybe 20 bucks or so, a bigger price point, you know, a service, a digital course, a luxury product, your funnel is probably going to have another step or two into it, or just 
just more time in between the steps to sort of nurture your client. So the first step in a funnel is awareness, right? This is the very first time a customer becomes aware that they have a problem and that your product or brand can help them. Something that it's, you know, a targeted social media ad. It's maybe a organic social media post. You see a TikTok about some, you know, here's how you're supposed to shave your legs, right? And you're like, I didn't realize I was shaving my legs wrong. And then, you know, they, they keep giving you all this information. You're like, oh yeah, I do need this thing. So that's one example of it. It's also could be Googling a problem you have and not realizing that that's the problem you have. And another thing could be word of mouth, you know, just sort of, you know, if you go back to the shaving your legs example, maybe you and I were talking about this TikTok or something and I hadn't seen it. And that's my first level of awareness. So when you're planning the first step of your funnel, and this is, you know, that first touch point, the first time a customer is going to interact with your brand, you want to consider where your customer is hanging out online. It's a waste of money to run Facebook ads. If your customer is a Gen ZR who wouldn't be caught dead on Facebook. Facebook, right? Then you want to look at TikTok. You want to consider, you know, where are the other places that they're hanging out online? Yeah. And this is a perfect opportunity to, if you don't know who your target customer is, we have a discover your dream customer workbook that you guys can download via the show notes. So the next step in the funnel is the interest level. So this is essentially where the customer realizes that they need to solve that problem. So in this stage, they might go on social media or online to seek out more information about how they might be able to solve that problem. If you're a business, they might be signing up for your email list. Again, this is like the first piece of the puzzle where the customer starts to engage with you. They start to learn about you. They start to build that trust or you start to build that trust with them through your content strategy and through your email marketing. And this is, this is your opportunity to build that relationship. How are you speaking to them? What kind of content are you showing them? Are you showing them the solution to their problems? And then you can also use retargeting ads to reach customers who have shown interest in your initial ads. And then the next step below that is consideration, right? So it's gone from being like, oh, oh, let me, let me learn a little bit more about this brand. Let me, you know, I'll, I'll follow them. That, that doesn't hurt anything to reading all the comments on their posts on social media, or, you know, going on the website and reading the reviews, because at this point, the customer is deciding whether or not your products can solve their problem. They know they have a problem. They know they need help with this thing. And now the question is, is it you or is it someone else? So at this point you're comparing prices, right? You're looking at what's the best deal. Where are you going to get the most bang for your buck? You're reading reviews and you're asking questions. You know, maybe you're going to the fact page on a website or, you know, posting a question on an Instagram post. And this is where content can be so valuable where you continue to build trust. And again, if it's a higher price point item, if you're selling a service, this is where building that trust and really, you know, valuable content matters. You want to give them educational info, whether that's through email, social blogs, it helps move them down to the next level and start to trust you. Yeah. I want to add one comment to that too. This is also the stage where it's really important to to show your personality and to really set yourself apart from other businesses. I can't tell you how many times I've been on the phone with customers where, you know, they tell me like, I went with you because you're, you're doing like kind of out of the box stuff. You're not putting together websites that look like this, or, you know, your stuff looks different than your competitors. And that's why I want to work with you. So it's very, very important to build that distinguishing kind of factor of your business versus others in your niche. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's making your brand sparkly right? Like your brand is that you're, you've got purple hair and you, you know, give out all this information. And that's what I think the right people are attracted to you because of that, where somebody super uptight is probably not all that interested in what you have to say, which is great because those are not the people you want to work with anyway. Exactly. So the next step in the funnel is the purchase stage. So this is the stage where the customer actually decides that they want to purchase the product from you and that your solution is the solution for their specific issue. So one way to kind of of maybe incentivize that purchase is to perhaps give a discount code or a coupon code. This is super easy to implement if you're in an e-commerce business. One way for service providers to implement this is if you were to bundle services together, perhaps that can come at a discounted rate or some kind of bonus material, et cetera. And then, so the last thing I want to talk about is not an official part of the funnel. You know, you'll see whenever anybody talks about it, that purchase, you know, making the purchase is always the last step. But I think any good business person 
person is going to always think about what happens after a purchase is made and how to build that loyalty with customers. And so that's where a post-purchase email sequence would come in. That's where just, you know, continuing to build that brand and that experience for the customer. This is, you know, just nurturing the relationship and like, you know, Hey, sending out an email. Hey, did you love it? Leave a review. You know, it's just keep keeping the relationship going after something is sold because it's so much easier to sell to previous customers versus finding someone new and taking them through all steps of the funnel again. So just always keeping that in mind, even if it's not an official part of the funnel. Yeah. I think that that's a really great thing to bring up too, because especially for product-based businesses, like after somebody has purchased with you, there's usually some degree of purchase regret where people question in their minds, like, was it the right decision? Even if it's for a split second. And so when you really deliver and your packaging and your delivery, if it's fast shipping, you know, whatever you can provide for your customer, if that experience is good, that's going to leave a good impression on that person to perhaps come and shop with you again. Yeah. So do you want to, I think what would be helpful is if we sort of each kind of talk about the funnels that we work with a lot in our business. Do you want to maybe give an example of a funnel that, you know, you, you build or you create for your customer, for your clients? For sure. Yeah. So I love to think of social media as the top of my funnel. So when you are creating content on a, on a regular basis, if you're creating educating, entertaining, or inspiring content, this is going to help to draw the right people to you. And essentially they will enter the top level of your funnel. And so when you set up your social media profiles, most profiles will allow you to have a clickable link in your profile. And so when you add that clickable link, you want to link to some of your freebies. So maybe, you know, you offer your freebies and when people sign up for your freebies, they get added to your email list. And so you can see how this starts to create a funnel where like for somebody will see you on social media, they start to like you, they follow you, they continue to take your advice and implement your tips. And then maybe they take a step further to get on your email list, get one of your freebies. And when they download that freebie, maybe that opts them into an email welcome series. So like in your welcome series, you would offer a low cost offer at the end of every email in the series. You know, if they wind up purchasing one of those low cost offers, again, you could upsell them with another offer or put them into another sequence where you sell a higher ticket offer and you can kind of go on and on. It really just depends on your business. Right. And that works for both products and services, right? Like it's, it's the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. So I'll do an example of how SEO can work as a funnel because I love SEO cheap to free. You know, if you're just writing a blog post or doing your website content anyway, as long as you're using, you know, those keywords in the right places, it can bring you so much traffic without paying for ads, without having to post on social all the time. It's just, it, you put it out, it works while you're sleeping. So let's say a customer is looking for like a gift for, you know, a 12 year old girl or something they might, and she likes to craft. So they're going to Google craft kits for girls. And then they're going to find my client's website. I have a client who makes these really cute craft kits for girls that each one's built around like a female trailblazer, like Maya Angelou or Rosa Parks or something. So because I've put all the SEO into her website when I wrote it, and she's starting to do blogs too, she's going to find that website. And she's probably, she might, might not probably isn't ready to make a purchase, but she's gonna be like, oh, this is cool. This is, you know, something different than all the other, you know, Amazon craft kits that are just a box of a thousand beads, you know, these tell a story. So she'll maybe sign up for the email list and get the discount, but you know, she's going to, she's going to come back. She's not quite ready. And so in the time in between her signing up for the email list, and then she's getting these nurture emails, right? It's where the company's talking about, you know, the mission behind their brand, why they're different, you know, what, what they offer beyond just a box of beads. So she's gotten one or two of these. And then like number three hits her inbox and she's like, oh yeah, that's right. I need to buy this gift now it's time. So she goes back to shopping and then completes her purchase. That's awesome. I love that example. Yeah. It's, you know, that's when you realize that like sales funnels and this, this might sound bad, but I just feel like sometimes people like to overcomplicate things. And when I say people, I mean like the marketing bros out there, like they just like, I'm a click funnels guy. And you know, you need me to build your funnel. Cause you'll never understand what it is, but it, it's actually very simple. And it's, you realize how often we go through them on our own. You can understand how to build one for your business. Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're really not that complicated. And I think it will be easier to understand once we provide that visual so that folks can see like, you know, step one is this, step two is this and so on. So that about wraps up our episode on funnels. So take some time to review your current sales funnel and determine if there are ways that you can optimize it. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, stay sparkly.